Welcome back to Obscurist Gaming everyone, today we are taking a look at four of the most underrated racing games on the Switch. If I were to ask you to name any racing video game on the Switch, a good percentage of you would say Mario Kart, or maybe the remastered versions of Need for Speed or Burnout. At the time of this review though, there were literally 398 racing games on the Nintendo Switch alone. I won't be putting a review score on any of these four that I picked out, but I think they all deserve a lot more attention with enough variety that I hope to satisfy whatever arcade or simulation style you might be interested in. As always, timestamps for each game are below, and let's get started. Up first is Trailblazers, which might be my most controversial pick for this list, but I'll explain why in a bit. Conceptually, Trailblazers is the most unique racing game I have played since being the Switch owner, and I find myself going back to it even several years after its release, but based on the game's initial reception, I can't imagine too many people actually do the same. It's essentially as if you combine Splatoon with F-Zero. It's a futuristic racer with a pleasing cell shaded artistic style, where the main gimmick being that every racer is armed with paint, which when placed on a track acts as a boosting zone for yourself on future laps or your teammates when they drive over it. If you remain on your color boost for a significant stretch of time, then you can get a second and even third level boost for doing so. You can also paint over other racers' colors to take up more of the track. It is such a clever concept that I've never seen it before nor since in any racing video game. The game offers a vast variety of modes as well, albeit with some that are a little better than others. There's a full story mode with a few dozen chapters, even if it's a bit repetitive, a cup mode, which is a more traditional Grand Prix style experience, and a custom race where you can compete in time trials, partner battles, free-for-all races, team races, and a special mode called Gate Chase. Every track can be played in reverse or mirror mode as Let's well, go. so the 10 tracks available each have 4 versions essentially to add to the mix. At the end of every race, you and your teammates will add up the amount of points you earn and a winning team is determined. <laughs> My favorite of the previously mentioned modes has to be Partner Battle. I love working with another teammate, AI or locally, to paint the track with the best boosting line you can come up with, all while trying to sabotage the other teams of two. It's just a clever 2v2v2 game mode that again is a bit different than other racers out there. I honestly just wish the game had a bigger following, because playing something like this online versus other teams of two would be such a good time. The reason why I said the game might be controversial to be on this list is because the actual racing feels like it could have used some extra polish. Running into walls or other racers can be a little annoying at times, and as pretty as the tracks are, I feel like the game could have done a bit better emphasizing speed and painting on more open layouts versus mostly the twisting levels that exist, often ending with you crashing into a wall. There's also no way to drift, and that seems like a big oversight for a game that's really emphasizing speed and cutting corners as best as you possibly can. I won't go into a ton of detail here, but the game can also be a bit confusing to determine a winner since you are rated on how much you painted and boosted as opposed to just what place you finished at the end of the race. There is an online multiplayer mode too, but I honestly don't remember if I ever successfully found a race when the game was first released, even with cross-platform abilities, let alone now, so keep that in mind. Aww. 
My hope is that this concept eventually gets cleaned up in a sequel or someone else creates something similar. Regardless, if you are willing to take on its flaws though, and really learn the mechanics, it's a unique experience that has enough redeeming values to make it one of the more underappreciated racers in the entire Switch lineup, particularly with how unique the concept is. Next up on this list is a game that surely isn't all that underrated, but it definitely remains underappreciated on the Switch. Grid Autosport is by far the best, more simulation style game on the console. Just because it was released prior to the Switch's existence, before being ported over, doesn't matter as the game holds strong through the years since its original release. The main reason I wanted to highlight this game is that it's the only game in the entire Switch library that I know of that features direct support for the Hori Racing Wheel Pro, a real steering wheel that you can buy that actually has analog inputs for pedals, and the developers patched in a selectable control scheme for it. If you don't already know, that's essential for any more serious racing game. Many games are flawed on the Switch because the Pro Controller and the Joy-Cons only allow digital inputs, meaning you're either pressing the gas button down for max speed or not at all, and nothing in between. This doesn't matter for the vast majority of racing games like Mario Kart, but it does if you want a more authentic feel to your racing experience. I should mention the GameCube controller is an exception to this rule for games that support it, but to include the support for this strange third-party racing wheel originally made for Mario Kart is something else. It really just shows how much care they took making a great port of the original and objectively speaking, the most polished game on this video. Just be sure to get the deluxe version of the wheel and not the smaller kid-sized one. In regards to the game itself, Grid has a pretty robust amount of options. There's a lengthy career mode, time trials, online, local play, and cup racing, all of which are playable across five different classes of cars. I should mention that even with the addition of an online mode, it can be a bit difficult to find a race with anyone else, but not impossible, and I had a little but better luck here versus other games on this list. Regardless, whatever mode you might be into, the most works fluidly when combined with a control system that leans more simulation, but is almost as easy to pick up and play as any of the better Switch arcade games. The racing just isn't going to throw non-realistic aspects at you, with the focus being completely on the driving mechanics themselves. If that sounds good to you, and you are looking for a more simulation style experience with not that big of a learning curve, then look no further than Grid. Nothing else on the console comes close. The third game I wanted to highlight is Mantis Burn Racing, a game that I actually imported physically from Japan as it never received a physical release in North America. Because of this lack of distribution in the West, and being released relatively early in the Switch library, I think it became overlooked quickly, getting lost in the eShop abyss. Also, I do plan on doing a closer look at some of the other foreign imports in my collection, so look out for that video in the near future. Mantis Burn Racing is a top-down micro-machine style isometric racer. You race in full-size off-road style vehicles over about a dozen courses, mostly off-road as well in pseudo-futuristic environments. The game gives you a lot to do, featuring a career mode that spans a dozen seasons or so, each filled with a variety of races over each season. As you play, you unlock additional abilities for your vehicles as well as aesthetic upgrades. It's a nice reward system to keep you focused throughout the entire career mode. 
The game can be a bit challenging at first, but once you master the drifting and the controls in general, it becomes a blast to hit the corners just at the right angles and shave precious seconds off of your times. Kind of like Grid, I do think this game works best as a single player experience. The decently lengthy career mode combined with a game that is more about mastering the controls steers it more towards something you'd play on your own. That being said, up to four player split screen does exist with an online mode for up to eight players. Outside of the standard racers, there's also sprint cups, knockout, battle races with weapons, weekly challenges, and half a dozen more, all adding up to a huge amount of content to keep you interested. While some of these modes are more multiplayer based, the AI does do a good job keeping up, and, and it's pretty fun regardless of how many people join you in split screen. Technically speaking, the game's menus are a bit rough and confusing and somewhat lackluster with long loading times, but the racing itself is as close to perfect as you could expect, so don't let that get in your way. The controls and physics are fantastic for what you want and a game that is all about managing your drifts as perfectly as possible. A typical race will last about 3-5 to five minutes, usually competing against AI opponents. Like I said, online is available with cross-platform play too, but similar to Trailblazers, I could never find anyone to play with, so I can't speak to how well that works. Regardless, this is the perfect game for anyone that enjoys top-down racers or wants a rewarding, single-player racing experience. In terms of pure arcade fun, Hotshot Racing might be the most fun of out of every game on this list. It brings a lot of the same joy as a game like Mario Kart does, and similarly puts a considerable focus on the driving controls. It feels fantastic, with the speed, drifts, and boosting all working in tandem to create a wonderful arcade racing experience. Don't let the generic title fool you, but Hotshot Racing is a great time, so let's see why. Hot Shot Racing is heavily inspired graphically by old-school poly games like Virtua Racing, which by the way is also on the Switch, so it has a very appealing look right out the gate. There are 16 courses to choose from, with a mirror mode version as well, all of which fit in line nicely with the old-school aesthetic. There's 4-player local support and up to 8 players online. I had a little more luck finding an online game here versus the other games on this list, but I still wouldn't factor that into your decision. This game is made for local multiplayer and that's where it shines the most. In addition to Grand Prix mode, there's also time trials, single races, leaderboards, and more party modes like cops and robbers, and a shop for any in-game currency that you've earned. All of these modes perform as expected, and for an arcade game, it's nice to have plenty of distractions outside of the main experience. The racing itself is extremely polished and has a fun balance between drifts and boosts, even if the AI can be a little wonky with rubber banding at times. I really don't have all that much to say about the game other than it is easily in the running for best arcade racing game on the Switch, not named Mario Kart. And with that, that concludes my four racing games that I really think remain completely underrated and at least underappreciated for the console for whatever reason. If you are ever looking to expand out from Mario Kart or whatever racing game you may have already, then definitely consider one of these in the future. Happy gaming everyone and thanks for watching.